Hey folks, Kiltman here, Kiltman at your services. How are you all? Hope you're all doing very, very well. Now, this is going to be a quick video. I know I always say that, but no, it's got to be. I've got to start working soon. <gasps> and it's not going to be about prey or predator. Which I guess means someone should have told these guys... No, it's not about that. Just for a change. It's actually sort of attached to a video I did about a month ago. And I was discussing Super 8 movies and how I'd first encountered them at other kids' birthday parties during the 70s. You'd have the magician with the silly rabbit out the hat, confetti in your face, and uh, the droopy wand. It wasn't that kind of party. And uh, they would show Super 8 movies. So reels from Star Wars, from Frankenstein, from the werewolf, from Conquest to the Planet of the Apes. And I think I was talking about how these particular scenes, they were show reels, which are scenes put together. Uh, you were seeing things massively out of context. Like Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, where our hero is actually um, Caesar, the chimpanzee, played by Roddy McDowell, is getting tortured by the evil humans. And he gets, after being electrocuted, he survives it. They think he's dead, but he gets up behind the security guard and garrots him. Out of context, that made that to be a horror movie, which in some respects, it is a horrible movie. Uh, I love it, but it's, it's got horror elements to it. It's only the scariest of the Planet of the Apes movies, I think. But um, it, it made Caesar out to be the bad guy, the monster, and he's not, he's the hero of the bloody piece. But these things really stayed in my mind, and especially one called The Werewolf, um, a Sam Catter movie from the early 50s, and... Um, is a nuclear, it's an atomic sort of radiation werewolf. You can walk about in the daytime as well and all that's kind of strange, but it's very scary. The, the effects are really good for its time and made a lasting impression on me. But anyway, so I was talking about these Super 8 movies and how I didn't really know much about them. I've never actually owned anything like that. And uh, the amount of people that got on to me said, oh, I used to collect them as well. I've still got a vast collection. I love them, I never part with them. And people were sending me pictures of all their collections of movies, and wow, I didn't really appreciate just that. I know the collecting bug, obviously. I've still got a uh, piece of Max from VHS tapes, uh, millions of the bastards. And um, people have still got all these and their laser discs and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I can understand, you know, why you'd hang on to these things, but do you actually still watch them? Anyway, anyway, so a month goes by, and I was out in the pub, as usual. And drinky drinky, which reminds me, those of you keeping tabs, got a new one, got a new bottle after draining it yesterday. Cheers, y'all. And yeah, this is breakfast time. You know what? Ah, good foundation for the day. Um, I was in the pub and laugh, laugh, joke, joke, drink, thing. Then I went home, but later on that evening, um, the barmaid, Sandy, gorgeous Sandy, um, she texted me, she said, um, someone's left something for you here. I went, no, oh, what's that then? Not a bomb, is it? She goes, no, I think it's a film. Oh, all right, it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come along tomorrow because I wasn't going to, I tried to get around and say, oh, to Mrs. Kilman, I've got to go back someone. She said, you're not going back out there. So I went the next day instead. Now, Sandy wasn't there, but Natalie behind the bar was, and she went, oh, there's something here for you. It's in the cellar. I went, oh, that's why I've come in. But while I'm here, two large grouse, please, and a bottle of bud, and a bag of dried roasted nuts. <laughs> so, gets all these, and then I'm sort of wondering, are you going to go down and get this thing? But more people came in, so she's busy serving. And now I was beginning to, oh, I've got to remind her. In a little lull, she went, oh, I'll go and get that thing for you now. I think it's something to do with Superman. And I was like, what the, what the hell is this? She comes up with, from the cellar. That's a big box, isn't it? <laughs> it's Superman. Super 8. Talk about that a bit more in a minute. Because I said, in the message with, uh, with Sandy, I said, well, who's, who's delivered this? I mean, in the initial message. She goes, I don't know. I think his name's Ian. I know loads of Ians. But I do not know who delivered this to me. Um, when I next saw Sandy, I said to her, that guy that brought it in, she went, oh yeah, I don't, Ian. I said, well, do you know him? Does he come here regularly? She goes, I've never seen him before. 
you've never seen him before. So, you know, is he a friend of mine or what? Like, can you describe him? She was, I was busy at the time and a guy just come over and he said, oh, could you put this behind the bar for Chris Kiltman? Which was this. And then he was gone. <laughs> Mysteriously vanished. This time traveler. And uh, so I don't know who he is. Who's delivered this to me? I do not know. All I can assume is that he's someone who saw that video and went, oh, cut my mic like this. So, and I know where, I know where he frequents. So put it behind the bar there for us. But I don't know who he is. And I was asking like, Sandy, can you describe him? And she was like, oh, I was busy at the time. And he just leaned over with it. So I'm none the wiser. I know a lot of people call Ian. I do. Um, I bet you all do as well. And in fact, I've got several cousins called Ian, all of who were people that presented themselves to me on the street. That sounds wrong, but they, they just, in passing, went, oh, this would be years ago. Chris, uh, how are you? And I'd be like, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Who's, who's this thing? And they'd go like, I'm your cousin. I'm Ian. I'd be like, I don't know you. I've got lots and lots of cousins. And they come out the woodwork all the time. It's great, you know, the family tendrils are spread far and wide. Love it, but I don't know most of these people. Um, so if it's off one of the, the cousin Ian's, then cheers. But Ian, whoever you are, if you're watching this, big, big thanks. But I don't know who you are. <laughs> Although I probably do. And then he'll just go, it was me. And I'll go, oh God, what a guest. But um, so this turns up. Now, again, I've only seen these things back in those days of childhood parties. So it's like, wow. And there's me thinking, they came in like, you know, metal cans, then big round cans, and you took them out and you put them on the, on the projector and you spooled them all up and off you went. Now this, um, Superman, you know the film, we're hearing the music, but I'll put the proper music on. Let's, let's, let's actually get into what we know and love. I'm gonna show you now, it says here, a four, 400 foot reel, super eight sound and color. So we're talking the business here. This is one, this is not, not your side and black and white crap. This is the full McCoy, you know. Uh, but it's a 400 foot reel. Now, does that equate to, all right, let's think about it. There used to be 200 foot reels, didn't they? A 600 foot reel or 600 feet of film equates to like an hour and a half. Someone's gonna correct me on this, because I, I, I genuinely do not know. Uh, so 600 foot would be like an hour and a half. So 400 foot, would that be like an hour? Best part of an hour? I don't know. And, you know, I remember seeing these things, uh, they could be entire sequences, like the first reel of a movie itself, and then you're, because that's obviously how they do it, you know, in when you're projecting a movie in the cinema, in the old days, pre-digital, that's how you do it. You'd have several reels of film, and you have to change the, the reel over, make it seamless, obviously, let the film play out, the full movie. Uh, but these things, they are super eight, you know, for home use. I remember that some of these would be a showcase sort of thing where you'd have tons and tons of trailers all cut together and you'd have um, scenes from a movie, but not, not the full movie, but it'd just be like clips, five minute clip, five minute clip, five minute clip, and that would be it, you know. Like the ones I saw when I was a kid, that's how they tended to operate. It's a bit louder than you think, doesn't it? Kilt Man! <laughs> there should be a movie. Now. <laughs> Kickstarter campaign. Let's get a Kilt Man movie off the ground. Come on, let's do it. Uh, but, so yeah, 400 foot reel, Super 8 sound and colour. I'm wondering just how much stuff's on this. Oh, in case you're thinking, oh, it's just an empty box, Kilt Man. There's a great little sort of um, advertising bit of blurb for the company that made this. There it is, it's there. Uh, there's nothing on this, I've looked. There's, there's no like, on the sides, there's no like, um, 15 minutes, 25 minutes of, you know, Superman. There's nothing, it's just, there you go. And I've got no means of playing it. And I don't think I'd ever, I ever would. But I think it's it's just a bit of history, isn't it? So here's the cut. Well, it's Columbia Pictures Home Entertainment. 711 Fifth Avenue, New York. 
New York. Uh, and you send, send us off and you get a free Columbia Pictures Super 8 handbook catalogue. Including professional hints, <coughs> excuse me, on setting up your own Hollywood home screening room. Now we've all got Hollywood home screening rooms. No matter what the size of your, your screen is, it, the picture's extraordinary, isn't it? And we're all watching at the very least Blu-ray, so, you know. And many people have got projector screens as well. So, you know, we're watching 4K, you've got your OLEDs, you've got... We've got the best thing without actually having a genuine cinema, an IMAX screen, you know, or super cinemascope and all that, like, um, you've got the next best thing. And in many cases, in my home cinema setup, I've got two, two subwoofers. They're, they're both very old now, but one's a BK Monolith. Wow, it, you feel it on the street outside. When I've put on things like, um, say, Gladiator or Black Hawk Down, both of these got movies as it happens, um, and Mrs. Kiltman's pulled up outside, got out the car, the car's been buffeted, and she gets out, she can hear it and feel it on the street outside. We've got a garden outside, and then there's the pavement, and then there's the road, and she's People on the other side are probably thinking, there's a riot in that house! Because it's shaking everything. And I loves it, I does. Um, so, and then I've got speakers all around as well. But, so your sound, my sound is better than our local cinema. The light cinema down in New Brighton, which is great, I love it, but um, it's not a patch on what the quality that I'm looking at on my screen and the sound that I'm hearing. Not a patch, I tell you. But yeah, now, a curious thing about this, which I found, and someone can hopefully um, explain this to me. On the spine here, it says, 400 foot reel, Super 8 sound cut again. And then underneath this little fancy little blue band, it's got a not less than 320 feet. Well, it shouldn't be. It's meant to be 400 foot. What does that mean? Does that mean that, oh, well, we're saying it's wonderful, but actually some of these, you know, they do fluctuate. Sometimes it could be less. So, but, it, but I guarantee it's not less than 320 feet. Well, I, if I'm paying a set price for a 400 foot reel, I want it to be a 400 foot reel. I don't, I don't know the finite mechanics behind this. Is it possible? Oh, well, to get these sequences on, it actually comes to less. I don't, I don't know. Someone let, someone let me know, because I'm dead intrigued. But I've never seen that sort of thing before. It's like if you've got a, I don't know, let's go back to vintage time again, and you've got a, a Betamax uh, 180 uh, uh, blank tape, which is meant to be about three hours, yeah? Uh, three hour tape, but not, not less than, um, than two hours and 40 minutes. Well, no, I'm buying a three hour tape. It should be three hours. I'm buying a 400 foot. You know, real of film. It should be 400 foot. Should it not? <laughs> I don't know. I genuinely don't know. It just seems really odd. Oh, look, not, not less than. You know, like some little disclaimer. So you, you couldn't, like, it, it runs out. You go, Hang on a minute. There should be another four or five minutes of this to go. Damn it. Oh, well, oh, well it is only 320 foot. I don't know. But yeah, very intrigued by this. And uh, as I say, you know, I never really thought about them having sort of proper, uh, you know, cases. I know, that's my own naivety. I do not recall back in the 70s when I was a kid that they come out in lovely, you know, illustrated boxes like this. It was just, I just remember my cans. Well, I don't even remember the cans, to be honest. They were just, they just suddenly hooked this thing up. Lights went out, curtains went across. Put that cake and jelly down. Stop fighting in the corner there and watch this movie. In fact, I think, as I think I said, it was only me and my mate Nick Pierpoint, uh, who was the first guy to have one of these parties. And we were in his house. All the rest of our mates were all fighting around the place. And they're outside playing footy. They're on the roof and everything. like Kids. But me and him were just sat glued to what was on the screen. The flickery, jerky screen. And the noise of this thing. <laughs> like some, you know, generator. But yeah. So that's very interesting, and uh, yeah. Mr. Luthor, jor -El. yeah, oh, I mean, I'm made up to have it. There's not a lot I can do with it. 
Let's put it there. Let's see if it glitches out. Oh, that's all right. I thought the ring light would pick it up. I mean, at the moment, that's my go-to at the moment. Superman uh, Blu-ray movie collection. Uh, is it on 4K yet? Do you know what? I don't even know if it is. It, it might be. I can't. I genuinely can't remember if it's on if it's on 4K or not. Uh, um, even if it is, I haven't got it on 4K. So. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, Ian. Thanks, Ian. If you've got any more, just put them behind the bar. So, I mean, like many people that come in on spec trying to find me, and they know where I go. Um, if, it's, if it's around here, it's the cask and the telegraph. And, uh, well, there's sometimes some other boozers, but, you know, I'm usually to be found in those places. And uh, so there you go, there you know. And, um, and he's coming on spec, looking for the kilt man. Kilt man's not there. And he's like, well, I'm going to have to, I can't stay. I haven't got his number, so I'm going to have to, like, just take the chance, take a punt and leave it behind the bar. <laughs> but, uh, so it's great. Yeah. It's a great little sort of French resistance sort of network. I'll just leave this for him here. I want to get like a little cubby hole, a little secret hatchway in the wall, and people with a certain code can get in there and put something, you know, special. I'll leave that up to your imagination. A bottle of whiskey would go at, would actually go pretty well. Cut down the prices behind the frigging bar. Anyway, folks, there you go. That's a little video. That's to get us sort of off the uh, the prey and predator path for a while, because I've really, really gone to town on that movie, as you know. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more to do with it, but let's get a bit more of a sort of an even keel going on and I'll get a few more things, you know, to talk about. Because there's a million more movies that we should discuss. And the, uh, the commentary track went down well. Um, I will be doing more of those. So things like, now, now we've done it, the thing, the good, the bad, and the ugly, Halloween, Escape from New York, Gladiator, oh my God, Superman, you know, anything. Oh, it could be great, great fun. Um, but one thing I will say, because someone got on to me and said, I was distracted by looking at your face when I should be looking at the film. I know, I know. Well, that's the, the one problem that we've got. What you should do when I'm doing a commentary track, just, just have your, your, whatever media device you, you're listening to me on, just put that to one side. Look at the screen. Look at the movie. You sync it up. At the same time I press play, you press play. Bingo. We're off and running together. And uh, you don't look at me at all. But that's the mistake I made because I, I know I'm on camera. So I was, I was showing tomahawks and axes and I was showing the dog sitting beside me. But of course, <laughs> that's taking you away from the movie. <laughs> I'll work it out. We'll, we'll get there. Don't worry, we'll get there. So folks, anyway, in the meantime, and this uh, ever Helter Skelter in between time, please keep it kilted, keep it Celtic. Super date forever, you know? And um, I'm going to see you all on an exploding planet near you soon. Ooh, Mr. Luthor! <laughs>